next time on Dragon Ball Z. Was that the bite of 87? Oh boy, I wonder how many people have hated me because of that little sting. Hello everyone, welcome back to Goosebumps Horror Town Playthrough. This is part 3 to A Shocker on Shock Street, a series that will never end because I seem to always get myself involved with something that caused me to kind of not get, uh, the, the, okay, let, let me be honest with you, I got sick. And it sucked because it affected my throat, so I couldn't do anything about that sort. Don't worry, it's not the dreaded uh, virus that shall not be named. I don't think so anyways, but unfortunately that caused me to be in quarantine, so, you know, it's not like I got to do anything work here. But, good news is I'm hoping to get stuff caught up, so, man, it's already in October and it's already done. Oh my god. Yeah, right, let's just continue on with this. So, let's go ahead and talk about this episode. We're going to be taking a look into finally that of the other new character, the premium character, Aram. Now some of you probably looked at Aram's design and pretty much get the nail on the head of what she's based around, but in case you haven't, allow me to explain it to you. Yes, her design is roughly heavily based on the character Android 18 from the Dragon Ball Z series. Why? Well, they're both robots. Well, okay, one of them's an android, the other one's a robot. You get what I'm trying to say, okay? I just... whatever. And like I did before, I'm gonna also show off some pictures from um, Playboy Vampire because, again, they did a lot of art when it came to this update in particular. So, this is the one they did when it came to Eren. I did like the design of everything here, and what you'll notice is that they have a theme of having it be, like, Shocktros as the main character, but I don't know, he probably can further explain the idea behind this. I guess it's just the theming behind this whole thing. But that's not all we're going to be looking into. We're going to also be talking closely a little bit more with the two animatronic scenes because we're going to get to see them around here. That is that of Wolf Boy and Wolf Girl. And yes, as you probably look into this, they are indeed based off of a FNAF series. As if this sign doesn't give you a clue in already. But yeah, um, if you don't know, they're I, I do appreciate the fact that the artists actually made these robots unique and not like, a, oh, this is a direct copy of FNAF like the drive-in sign was. But, yeah, the heavily inspiration is that is the only animatronic that kind of resembles a wolf, that of uh, Funtime Foxy over here. Yeah, a weird inspiration, but now you can get to see where it was like the weird robot bits. I do appreciate how they've kind of made them stand out and you wouldn't even know that. Not to say that it's the only thing that they inspired. There are other robots too, but yeah, the main theme of it anyways, when he comes to the animatronic, certainly more of a FNAF inspired. And before I forget, yeah, he also did uh, some drawings too. Uh, here, here they are. I, I actually preferred his designs to these characters more so than the official. Don't get me wrong, I don't mind the official ones, but this one's a little bit more fleshed out. He also went into detail with it came to, like, Wolf Girl here. What I also like about this is that, like, what you'll even notice when it came to Eren, and maybe even when it comes to the last chapter, is that they kind of go into detail a little bit of, like, robot bits and, like, how it would work. It's, it's kind of like, it's almost like a blueprint of sorts, which I do appreciate. But yeah, that, that, that seems a bit it for me when it comes to talking about... Ah, uh, this has been long overdue, so let's just dive right into the gameplay and go ahead with the dialogue, shall we? Start right off into the game, and we're gonna go and continue on with this. Oh, look at that. That Aaron robot's on. She's really a fun piece of work. I should have shocked come join me so he can see it himself. And she's actually made friends with that sneaky kid. This movie's gonna be perfect. Hello! I'm ready to start shooting my scene now! Oh, hello. Yes, yes. Uh, I need you to rehearse this line. It's very important, so I want you to really get into it and find the scariest way of saying, Welcome to the Kingdom of Doom. Ooh, spooky! I love it! I'm on it. Off you go, little puppet. I'll keep him busy for a while. You can tell that Slappy's being a nuisance, but here comes the fun part. And I've gotten my masterpiece. P 
beautiful. But I'm not even in the movie, and I've been practicing my mind all day. Look! Welcome to the Kingdom of Doom. <laughs> That's the silliest line I've ever heard. I couldn't scare anyone. Shut up, kid! <laughs> He's right, though. That did sound silly. Just go off, puppet. We won't be requiring your... ACTING! Wow, he's such a savage, isn't he? Movie editing is the last thing and we need to place an end tram in the straight tram. Yeah, I really do like how they did this portrayed Faraday here. You can, uh, later on in part 4, you get to see that this guy has no fear whatsoever. Except for one, and that's going to be a teaser to the update that's coming up after this one. By then it's going to be, you'll get it. And by the time part 4 comes around, I'm going to be so happy because I'm going to have to give a shout out to somebody again because they helped me with this Boro problem. You may have already, already noticed it when I did my um, crafting 101 on the next update. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a fun time there. Also, I know somebody's watching this and they're kind of looking forward to seeing how the uh, Mantis looks overall. You'll be happy to know that in this part we're going to be taking a deep look into the Mantis of how he walks around and his attack. So don't worry. It won't. This is going to be the part where we're going to finally get to see this guy in action. And um, before I do the movie editing bit, I decided to show you what this is supposed to look like when he does his clapping animation. And I think it went perfectly. So let me show you. <laughs> he's, I placed him and he's now on top of the... Uh, on the card and look at him he's so happy with the like his own video like look at this this is so they did this on purpose they knew what they were doing look at this he's clapping at nothing at the moment but yeah all right well here he goes now we're gonna finally get to the yep look all right counting down and then hey there it is <laughs> the mantis Ooh, okay yeah, this is this is a little fun little nod but anyways let's continue on with the main story Curse. I don't need any reversals. I was born to do this. Just watch. I'm scary. I'm angry. Beware. I'm cool. Totally chill. Nice to see we get to see the sunglasses bit come back. See? Am I a natural or what? Oh yeah. A natural. I don't think he can take the hint, can he? Jesus, lady, calm down. Wow, there's so much to do here. Um, but I'd like to start small, if you don't mind. Um, can I see that dirty workshop over there? It seems spooky. Of course, sir. Your voice is my command. I don't like this wolf girl. She's too spooky. What's also weird about the wolf girl animatronic, as you'll see, is that her in-game model is like pink, right, to contrast with girl and boy. That, the weird color choice they decided pink is girls and blue is boys kind of deal, like, I, I get the whole shtick of that. But, um, in, in the actual drawing bit, she's more purple. So, I don't know what happened there, but... I don't know, I guess two people got the wrong types of colors. It's, it's kind of annoying, it's kind of like, when you're... Uh, it's like that one stupid uh, Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog bit, where it's like... Yeah, it's blue, but it ain't hedgehog blue, you know? That kind of little tedious um, nitpicking that you're kind of so bugged out about. Anyways, yeah, we have Erin over here doing her bit. And in this part, a lot of people would have been stuck because they had to wait in order to get Erin's stuff because you needed at least 5,000, yeah, 5,000 of the batteries. But because I bought her in the back, I already got her. So we're going to continue on with this, and then we're going to actually, actually get to see her being alive, so. Whoa, look at this place. There's so many robot parts everywhere. This is so cool. Hold on. What am I seeing over there? I think it's a woman. Uh, hello? D did you work here? Can you hear me? Hello? Marty, she's dead. Well, hello there, good sir. Oh good, there's two of them. He sounds so stupid too. Ah! What? 
You're not Wolf Girl. And why did you sneak up on me like that for? You made me fall over this. Ouch! Hey, get off me! You're crushing me! She's alive! I guess she must have accidentally turned her on. Hey, look, we got our first congratulation bit. So, Marty has just met a young woman in a garage full of used robot parts. That's a very odd place to meet somebody, by the way. I, I, I have a feeling there was a joke there, but I guess he just kind of lost his train of thought. So you can speak. Why didn't you answer before, when I was talking to you? Well, I just didn't... I... I'm speaking now, aren't I? My name is Aaron. What's yours? Huh? Um... Hi, Aaron. I'm Marty. I'm sorry I tripped over you. I thought I was the only one here. That's okay. Are those snacks up there yours? I think they're supposed to be sock streak snacks, but they just come off as snacks. Yeah, they flew out of my hands when I tripped over you. But they're too high up on that roof. Just leave them there. Yeah, so this is the one where you have to do the snacks, which is the only thing, by the way, that you have to do it with. You have to place an underground tram, and then you also have to have one of her do her first animations, which is flight mode. The getting the snacks is pretty easy. It's going to be annoying to get the actual roaches to go bits, though. However, like you'll notice in the beginning of this part here, or in the first bit, you, if you actually decide to partake and buy Connor, who was very useless in, at, when the event came out, he at least had something there where... Oh, and by the way, the fact that she's flying like this kind of reminds me of a bit of an Iron Man bit. I think that's a heavenly inspiration, but I'm not 100% sure. But I wouldn't be surprised. She's just kind of hovering, so she's not really flying per se. But yeah, but anyways, if you did get Connor, he can give you this, the, this, this is an axe. So you don't really have to bother with that. You just have to do it five times and you'll be done. Anyways, we had fun with him doing that, so we might as well have him do his thing. By the way, doing his movie editing bit is going to be a very key point to do because he actually ends up dropping the, um, I think it was the animatronic switch, which is one of the requirement items for two items. One of them is just for it in order to get the main prize, but the second one is also because of the, um, I believe it's the animatronic head. Again, it's been a while, so I don't really remember. And, uh, yeah, here's another animation. Her fixing her hand, and... You know, we know that she's a robot, but this looks disgusting with her hand being broken like that. It's just flopping down. I guess kudos to them trying to make it look like a broken hand there, but it just, ooh. <laughs> it doesn't look too pleasant, though, doesn't it? And yeah, you know, that's the other thing, too, I want to point out, is that it seems like when it comes to the profile pictures, when you see in dialogue, the image is kind of trying to resemble that in-game. But sometimes the in-game model doesn't look 100% to the actual person in the game in the sense of coloring wise. I'm not sure why that is, but it's just funny to note that. So just yeah. And uh, yeah, at some point near the end of part 4 you're going to find out how I designed my little Shock Street Park Plaza type thing there. But yeah, we're going to finally come to the end of the Scariest Man on Earth quest line. So here we go. And I guess that's how you make a good horror movie. Although I still think Farday was too cruel to make that Marty kid go through all that horror just for the sake of a movie. Isn't that exactly what you do every day to your players? You know, he has a point. <laughs> I guess you're right there. Well, everyone's allowed a guilty pleasure, after all. Right. And there we go, we're done with Faraday. Well, I mean, Faraday is still going to be part, but his his whole main story is done. I am, I'm glad that they decided to kind of make it its own thing. Like, yes, you pretty much... Like, it kind of does tell you exactly what's going to happen, but it doesn't spoil everything like uh, Zarwood did. So, I'm happy about that, that they fixed that problem. And the next update coming up, they did the same thing too. So, I'm kind of glad, like... Yeah, and then the annoying pop-ups. What you'll end up seeing is that the next, like, not this um, sequence of uh, this quest line type of deal, but the next um, update we're going to be doing, I'm going to be cutting all those stupid pop-ups. I'll explain when they get there, though. Here you are. I got your snacks back. 
It's like a snake. It's... Snake. What? How did you get them? Oh, um, I just, uh, they fell off the roof. Smooth. Huh. That's nice. Thank you. So, what's all this stuff? Do you live here? It's my father's work stuff. Feel free to touch whatever you want. Wow, this girl's nice. And she's so cool, too. Having all this robot parts to play around. I don't think I ever met such a cool girl. Oh no, Marty, don't tell me you're... Oh no! Oh no, not again! Okay, it's not gonna be as bad as that, but, uh... Oh, this is gonna be a bit, uh, mmm! Miss, would you like to come along on a tram ride to see the park? Yeah, cool! Oh my god, she's smiling. <laughs> Isn't she pretty? She's scaring me! We're here to have fun, not kill Batman. Never smile again, please. Wait! Don't get on a separate cart! We can share mine! Hey, so where are you from? I have never seen you around town. Oh no. Yes. Oh, I'm from Horror Town. Uh, let's just say I've been a little off lately. So I haven't met many neighbors. I think... I think I may like this girl. I never had any time to think about girls. What's happening to me? Oh no, not again! <laughs> Oh god, is this gonna be Valentine's Day Poison Lake 2.0? No, no it's not. Don't worry about that. Uh, yeah, and before you ask, I, yes, I did rip that joke right from the Big Bang Theory. You can go ahead and make fun of me now. How dare I bring that, that shell of a, of a comedy into here? How dare you? If you don't know what I'm talking about, it's the Joker bit. I mean, when I first saw the image of her smiling, it, it really didn't look good. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, yeah, she's a robot, so I'll give her the benefit of the doubt, but come on. Come on, man. Yeah, we're gonna get ourselves the first of the attractions, which is the Kanga the Animal Vampire. I'm surprised that a lot of these uh, references to the movies seem to come more for Faraday versus anything from Shock. But I think they've kind of combined the two, but, you know, not that I mind, right? I do like everything here. But, uh, let's go ahead and do her first, an another animation, which is Super Speed, and, uh... It's- is she is she running like Naruto? Nice. Nice anime reference. It's bad enough that she's Android 18. Ah, oh, man, it's just so bad. But, yeah, don't worry, it's not gonna be as bad as the, um, uh, Valentine's thing one, but it's just- ooh, oof, boy. Oof! Trying to die, they're trying to build drama when it comes to a game like this, especially bringing all these books together is somewhat interesting, you know. Um, especially when it comes to Aaron, you might be wondering exactly what's your what's your deal. Well, I think she's designed to be a bit older, probably around like teen wise, but I'm not hundred percent sure where. She kind of fits that diet, so that's why her voice is a little bit more older. She's not exactly the age of middle school. She's like probably around. Uh, it, it's kind of hard because she's a robot, right? So she's technically new. But, uh, yeah, before I, before we go on in here. Ah, look at this. Look what I'm going to be doing now. Guess who shows up? There he is. There he is running around. Look at him. There's the big boy. <laughs> He's attacking like you would ever think. And, yep, there he is. Close-up look at this guy. I'm very surprised he decided to take the inspiration of him actually being... An actual animatronic robot that actually has and it's funny because there's spotlights and everything on there there's cameras there's cameras in his eyeballs which you're gonna get a quick look at because yes before I spoil anything this thing does talk so you get to have fun with that here's a close-up face of him tacking I do like again I do like how they designed this thing and I guess the reason why it's silver is because it's an homage to the cover art because the cover art like in the, it's stupid, in the movie, and I'll talk about this in part four, but in the movie, they have it be a real life mantis, but giant, but here, they decided to do it in the book where it's more like a actual silvery metal mantis, and the whole shtick of this thing is that it's filming for Farday because, you know, he needs real fear, and what better way than the eye of the actual, um, monster. But I still don't understand why Faraday needs to be here, because you would think that he'd be controlling the thing, but no, it's implied that this thing is on its own. 
So I still don't understand why fair day is required in order to get this thing. That's probably one of the weirdest justifications, though. You know, I, I still don't get it because it's its own entity. And, uh, yeah, it it also, and, and here's the thing, too. Like, they, uh, Afar Day knows that Aaron and everything is animatronic, right? So, later on in the dialogue, it kind of gets a bit more gruesome. Like, you remember when I made the mention back in part two with what he's inspired by, by his look-wise? And uh, I said that they kind of seem similar. Well, in this, in this end bit, near the end here, you get to see exactly what I mean by that. And uh, before I continue on, let's go ahead and uh, do this. In a moment, please. We're having a conversation here. But you need to go to the first attraction. And that's okay. We want to talk. We'll go in a minute. <laughs> Jesus, lady, calm down. Okay, we'll go. Just calm down. I love how they make Wolf Girl just go all nuts. Oh, wow. It's dark in here, isn't it? You know, I could just do a black screen like this, but, you know, I think you'd want to read the text, too. Yeah, and there's strange shadows moving over there. But what's that? What? What happened, Aaron? I can't see anything! Aaron? Aaron, are you still there? Oh my god! Aaron's gone! <sighs> okay, fine, I'll add it. There you happy now? I brought a dead meme back from the grave. I'm the guy who likes bringing dead memes, apparently. Can't wait to bring the extra saxophone guy back. Ah, uh, the uh, that's my shtick, apparently. I like bringing back memes. All memes of the dead. I go in the graveyard of the dead meme uh, grave and I dig them back up and bring their corpse back and make fun. Then and so that way my my thing will forever be uh n a timeless. No. <laughs> God, I, I don't even know why I decided to put the joke in like that. I guess it's just my mental thought at that point because I know a lot of you would be the oh my god bit because that's rather infamous and overplayed that it couldn't be... I couldn't help myself but to add this and uh, yeah, oh, here we go. We're going to add the first animatronic which is that of Wolf Boy, which is weird because we get a lot of Wolf Girl but not so much Wolf Boy, the goofy sounding character, but um... Yeah, <laughs> a lot of you are probably upset with this guy now because of the beginning bit with Markiplier with the with the meme of the '87. That was so dumb too back then. I love how people just like get green screens of certain moments and decide to just have it be displayed. But yeah, here is the close-up bits with them doing the scares, as you probably would expect. And um, it's weird because. The animatronic tail looks more like a reptile's, like a gator's, but that might just be me. Again, it's just the design of it, but yeah, it's just, it's odd. Not to say it's bad odd, it's just, it's just weirdly, I guess, design-wise, but it's what it is, right? But, yeah, man, this has been... I do want to apologize, though, because I know... A lot of other people don't um, look into this as much as I do as far as, like, showing all the nitty-gritty story, dialogue, all that stuff. I mean, there are people who are doing it and covering the game, so I'm not saying I'm the only one here, but it seems like I'm the only one who actually goes ahead and actually just does everything. And I don't want to be the one-all be-all. I'm very much happy to see people actually do this game. In fact, that's probably good for the whole community, I would say, because then it has more than one voice, right? I like to hear other people's opinions. And so far, I'm actually seeing more people starting to do that right now. I've mentioned, you know, Dylan, who... Or, not Scott. But, uh, my names are so bad. He did mention me in his last playthrough, so thank you. I'm going to have to do it again when I finally get to the last bonus bit, which you assisted me with. So thank you on that one. But I believe uh, someone else started doing this. Uh, he's also a huge Goosebumps fan. He has commented on a lot of videos, as well as others I've seen. 
But um, I think he goes by In Closet Goosebumps fan, and he started kind of doing his own playthroughs. And it's interesting kind of watching him play and hearing his um, grievances. Because it kind of gives, again, I like hearing different points of perspectives of how people view certain things. Because I usually say I don't like this event, and other people will. And it's interesting to see why they would say they like it and what they don't like about it. Because, again, I don't want to end up being the only person that, like, they're... It, it, you know what it is? It's like that, um... The saying when it comes to artists, they don't want to tend to give the meaning to their work because if they do, then people will just assume, oh, the artist said this is what they're going for, therefore that's what it is. Right? You don't want to end up being like that. But anyways, I've, I've tired on long enough, so let's go ahead and uh, continue on with this uh, story. Oh well, things are escalating quickly around here, aren't they? I do find this errand girl a bit odd. What was she doing in Shock Park? And why didn't she answer Marty when he spoke to her? Why are you asking these questions, Curly? You're telling the story. You know what happened. Who's there? Is someone else coming to attack me? I I'm not scared. I'll fight you. Wow, this girl's real feisty. And she's coming near. I should... Oh no, she kept off my head. Over here, Bonnie. I'm here. That's funny to me for a certain reason that you'll find out later on. Aaron! Aaron, where are you? Come on, boy. Let's see if we find her in the Lake of the Water Zombies. It's over there. The Lake of the Water Zombies? I don't know. Last time I followed you, I, I lost Aaron. Oh, don't be silly. She'll come back. But it's no use waiting around. Let's go! I wouldn't trust her. She already shown her cards to be a nut job. Run away, Marty. I guess so. You're an idiot. Oh look, she's on the other side of the lake. Aaron, I'm over here. Marty, that's not Aaron. That's a robot. Oh, oh wait, she is a robot. Never mind. All right, so place the water zombies, get some electric frames, and sell electric flames. I have enough to sell, but I'm not going to do that just yet. Uh, but. It's interesting because, yeah, they, they're bringing back old elements. Like, this is from Christmas, by the way. So I'll be interested when they get the Christmas stuff back. What are they going to do to replace it? Because I've noticed that they they, since they started doing that, right? When it comes to some of the other ones, like um, Welcome to Dead House, as well as like the recent uh, Vampire. Uh, yeah, because that's the next one that comes after Welcome is Vampire. They decided to change the drops to something else entirely. So... I'm intrigued to see what they're going to do in this case because those boards are very important. So, I don't know. Maybe they're going to switch it out with something else. But, um, yeah. And, um, if, um, and this is just my theory when it comes to why Wolf Girl goes, like, nuts. And, yeah, I know I'm kind of selling it with the voice of just changing it to be very deep and spooky. But I think the reason why that they do that is because... Faraday's whole point is to get the best horror movie out there. So these animatronics of what they're doing is making sure that they go to said area, right? They want they want the scenes to be met. So them dilly dallying doing nothing, she and I guess in a lesser extent Wolf Boy, his job is to basically push them to the direction where the cameras are so that way he gets his shots right does that start and make sense I guess so also these 3d boards are supposed to be um, that of the I, I think it's like supposed to be that of like what's going on on there which is the mantis but you know it's hard because it's just so weirdly affected that you don't really understand what's going on I'm sure if you were like the red and green uh, red and red and green red and blue um, free glasses. I'm sure probably the image will pop up and go, oh, there it is, right? But, nah, unfortunately that's not the case here. But yeah, and you know, we're gonna end up in summoning both of these, so this is what it looks like here. It's very weird how the, and I know this is just a facade making it look like it, but it's very odd when I'm seeing the mantis walking out of the, um, the park, and instead of, you know, going over top of the gates like you think he'd do, he goes underneath it. It's very weird graphical error. 
and, and that's one of the other things. This is like... One of the videos I talked about this, when I talked about how sometimes the layering just doesn't work out very well, and you end up kind of having these funny moments where it looks bizarre, right? Some elements make sense, like, say, this balloon spider is going on top of the buildings because, you know, it's supposed to be big and that's that's its shtick, right? But, like, when it comes to weird placements, you wonder what's going on. Like, especially when it came to, say, um... I think I've, I mentioned this before in part two, but with, um, God, I'm already forgetting the guy's name, you know, the Zeke, that's it. When you saw Zeke on the building, he wasn't doing his proper sh thing. Apparently, he can do it. It just, for some strange reason, it just decided to have his animation go behind the building, not on top of said building. So, yeah, it's, it's very weird. But, what can you do? Yeah, so, basically right now what I'm trying to do is get the parts needed and then sell said parts and then get enough to actually be able to get the part. Which I think after this, I might have enough, but I'm not sure. I think, uh, might not be just yet. I might have to collect something else and then be able to, but we'll have to wait and see. No, I do have enough. Okay, I thought I was for something, but now it's 350, so I have enough. So we're going to be able to continue on with this story. And um, we end up, at some point, we actually end up seeing the facade. I think we're coming closer to the end here, so we're going to get the reveal. Like, I know I've spoiled already. Oh, she's a robot. Like, we all know she's a robot, but this is where her mask falls off once we place this down. Marty, are you okay? You have to be careful. You almost fell in the lake. I know. It was that wolf girl's fault. She scared me. Where were you? A hand grabbed me and dragged me off my cart. I had to fight two creatures in the dark and run away. It was horrible. I think the second one was actually a skeleton. Aw, oh, poor Curly. <laughs> hey, wait a second. I saw you. You were all the way over there. On the other side of the lake. How did you run so fast to save me? Oh, um, I'm just a fast runner. But hey, Wolf Girl, why did you scare Marty? <laughs> he was only a joke. Let's carry on. We have to go in the last attraction, the Vacation of Endless Doom. Ooh, the Vacation of Doom, you say? I hear great things. I'm curious to wonder what the other creature that grabbed her was. Hey, Aaron. And uh, what's your dad's like? Hey, Aaron, and what's your dad like? Uh, me read grammar good. Oh, um, I'm afraid I... I haven't seen my father since he created me. Created? Do you mean you haven't seen him since you were born? Um, yeah, that's what I meant. Hey, what's that? Something's coming from that shadow over there. I bet it's either wolf boy or wolf girl. Hello, Aaron. I couldn't help but listen to what you were saying. Your dad must not love you very much because he visits me all the time. Oh no, it's worse. It's the giant bug. How dare you! Oh no, she's going Super Saiyan. I don't know. <laughs> Take the robot joint, sell it, and then have her do rage. I don't know why I said that. I guess I wanted to make a funny, but it just fell flat. I guess, oh, jokes, she's, she's based on Android 18, so, uh, Super Saiyan, that's it. And I'm sure somebody, <laughs> it's been so long since I've actually looked into the Dragon Ball Z lore. I, I just, like, remember it vaguely when I was younger. And I'm sure someone who's an avid fan of the Dragon Ball series are going to be so pissed off when I said that. Because they're like, oh, you know she can't do that. And I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> Man, this dialogue exchange, this whole commentary, right? That This is the hard part, right? Whenever somebody does this, they, they you know, people who do this, you can feel my pain, right? Sometimes you don't know what you're talking about during these parts when uh, gameplay is kind of showing while you're watching this, just to keep entertained, because I could just be quiet during this part, but no, nah, you guys wouldn't want that, right? I, I don't think you do. What I will mention, too, by the way, and I'm going to show a close-up of Rage, which, you know, if you've seen her do her attack, yeah, big surprise. Same thing, her doing the twister spin there with her mighty T-pose. 
of certain dominance with her electricity freaking out. But, um, what's interesting is that they've, I love the way they designed the promenade by adding certain, like, um, tents and whatnot. But something that's interesting to me is that they actually took a model of the, I believe it's the entrance that, um, the ticket booth for the, um, magic event. And they just kind of recreated and added a, uh, a weird, um, mantis looking thing that would have been a cool item to have in the placement but whatever and uh by the way i'm seeing a lot of tents down there and it's like wait a minute i've seen those tents in the other update the the last one right in the in the in the title screen for be afraid be very afraid it kind of looked like a circus type of thing and then the game came out and it's like what what is this what is this environment i don't see anything here you lied to me game but yeah i'm sure you guys don't care about that all right, so let's go in here and uh, yeah shock ride So you get this to get the RB camera again easy item to get you can get that cheap You don't really need to do this by the way I'm only doing it because I have so much items that I can actually just go ahead and spend it because you know premium player hooray of a whale am I you whale, but regardless of that um you can get this pretty easily with this uh, actual uh, currency, because it's not that hard. But yeah, um, in part four, it's gonna be weird with the dialogue exchange. You'll get, you'll see what I mean. But for now, let's go ahead and look into this here. Oh, look at that fight! That girl really knows how to kick. I'll give you that shock. Yes, I programmed extra strength on her legs. Allows her to kick more strongly than any other animatronics, and run at a super speed, too. Ugh, those arms of hers do seem a little weak, though. Look! Look how that mantis ripped one right off! I'd rather not watch. Ah, oh, someone's getting a bit too attached there to their creations. I almost feel like he's a bit of a father. Oh, yes! Yes! I got them right where I want them! And now, the Coupe de Gras. Mantis? He is a kind master. Oh yes. Off you go. And remember, fight to kill. They have to fear for their lives so I can achieve the greatest horror film on Earth. Play the Cavern of Living Creeps, get some shock factors and sell shock factors. So yeah, remember when I mentioned with the whole... Uh, it's kind of weird for uh, Far Day to kind of like, yeah, we basically got confirmation the Mantis just ripped the Aaron's arm right off. And it's like, that's kind of gruesome. It's like, yeah, they're robots and all, but it's like, Marty doesn't know that, so that's kind of gruesome. That's like, man. It, it, there he goes again, underneath the... the... I'm not gonna, you know what, stop pointing it out, Grim. It's just gonna, it's just gonna hurt you more. But yeah, this has just gotten a bit more intense. Like, you can tell. Like, I really I really do like how I kind of made him, his insane voice, get a lot more creepier and more... Like, it's almost like possessed. That I think that's what I'm kind of going at with this here. But, I don't know. Maybe someone could comment and say that, oh, I don't like that. But, uh, oh well. That's This is what I was kind of going with here, is that... He just gets more possessed, the more he, more happy he is with his, with his work, right? Like, I guess his masterpiece. What? I don't even know, understand what his whole sh masterpiece is supposed to be, right? Like, you get a vagueness of what he's trying to do here, but I don't get the story, right? Like, what? What is it supposed to be exactly? That's what I want to know. Is it supposed to be about two kids going to an a, abandoned attraction and then? They end up getting, like, the, the, the attractions coming to life, and uh, you know what? That's probably what it is. I, I'm sure that's that's a story, right? It, why do I even question it now, right? You got to play the cavern script, so I have to wait a few more times before we're able to kind of continue on with it. But, yeah, we're coming close to the end here, and uh, at that point, we'll be able to finally move on to the last one, which is going to be a little bit more intense, because that's when everything gets revealed. Everything starts to end and close, and we finally get a teaser to what's coming up next, and um, 
Yeah, like, by this point, you already know what it is because it's already over. It's a coming close to being over by now, right? That's how bad this is. And you know what? We'll end it off with buying Shocklands. And I spent 90... Nah, there you go. I, I spent the extra land called Shocklands because why not? And uh, yeah, get a close-up look at the Lake of the Water Zombies and... You're going to see I'm going to add a lot more stuff here. That's my next target. I ended up getting that part at some point. I'm not sure when exactly that happened. But yeah, this whole video was meaning to come out real sooner than later. But I do apologize. You know how life is. Sometimes it just gets in the way. But hey, hopefully I get more videos coming out soon and I can catch myself up. So that way we get into spooky month very quickly. So anyways, regardless of that, I've been Grim. I'll be seeing you next time for more Goosebumps Horror Town. Until then... Get your seats ready and stay inside, for it shall come to the climax.